with um, the people in the mentorship group. And one of the questions um, that keeps coming up is, hey, hey, how do you set up your chart? Like, let's say you're fresh, brand new. Uh, you're trying to learn how to pick up a ticker or how do you trade a ticker? I'm going to watch you. I'm going to walk you through on how to do that. Um, so let me show you the chart. So let's get to Tesla because Mark just covered Tesla. So the question we ask is, well, Mark said this is kind of where the level is going, the, but you want to know if you're trying to trade, where do you start buying puts? Because, you know, you want to buy the shares. What if you can, let's say, put a thousand dollars short it, make four or five K out of it and use that money to buy stock? How would you do that? So first thing I would do is I look at larger time frame to know what's going on. Let me just delete this. So it doesn't get in the way. So the first thing I do is I look at key points, right? I'm looking for areas where this has paled, uh, failed and it's a very strong area. So right away, I see a supply at 765 and it goes all the way to 745. Believe it or not, 20 points is a very good number on a daily. Usually these things can go 50, 60 points. So I like that. What else am I looking for? Then I identify a trend line. Again, guys, I do this every day. I do about 40, 50 charts a day. So I just see stuff right away. So I hope you guys uh, take your time with the chart. So I see this trend line. We failed it once, twice, three times. And this is not technically a fail because we never broke above it. We're still connected to it. So this is a valid trend line and we're approaching very close to it. Um, so once I have that, I'll go for on a shorter time frame. So after a day, I usually go an hour because four hours is not going to show me anything different. One hour is perfect for trading too. Like if you're looking into August calls or puts, I'm looking into August puts for this play. And this is going to help you on why you should not take certain trades. So now let's look at this. Okay. We've got a big trend line, which is roughly, let me mark this for you guys. It's roughly 7.05 um, to break. So you can enter this trade at 7.05, but just know that there's a supply that starts at around 7.33. So you've got roughly um, about 28 points going. Um, and if you, let's say, get in tomorrow and this happens, you can make four or 500% on this. But if this consolidate, this is not worth taking. Um, but this would be your how you would take this trade. So if you're preparing for tomorrow, Wait for 7.05, 7.05 breaks, 7.33. This is my plan. Again, not a financial advice. So I'm looking at 7.33. Um, that would be my trade. After 7.33, I'm going to leave runners. 80% of my position, I'll be out of it. In terms of shorting, I'm looking uh, to short this around 7.50, 7.60 area. I'm looking at a 500 uh, put for August. Um, OPEX, uh, which is, let me let me check quickly. Okay, so August OPEX would be around 19th August. So that's, I'm looking at 519 August for this. And what would happen? So let's say we get to 750, 760. These are called easy laid back trades. Mm -hmm. um, I'd enter at 750. If it breaks 760, I'll be out. I'll probably lose around 4 to 5%. If this trade, however, works though, I'll make anywhere from uh, 400 to 500%. And it's not going to be a trade where I have to mon uh, constantly watch it. This is my profit target for um, this 627 at 625. I will sell 80%. I'll leave 20% in case it fails. If this fails, we're going to get to the levels Mark is talking about. Not like close to 450, but you'll see around 550, 500. That happens. This play goes to 1,000%. So um, that's kind of how I would trade. And you can grab any chart and do the same thing. So I went one day, one hour. You should go one day, um, four hours, uh, one hour, 30 minutes, five minutes. But um, I just showed you because I'm looking at a long put. I don't want to get too short. Uh, sorry, not too short, but um, I don't want to look at a shorter time frame. But this is kind of what I'm clean trend line. You've got a supply uh, on multiple levels. You've got a resistance here. Now, would you let's talk about this. What if you want to play a put from here if the market goes down? Personally, I wouldn't play the put. I'll explain you why. You've got a one-hour demand here. Then you've got a demand here. Now, 
Let me go take you to a five minute after this. Let's go 30 minute. 30 minutes not going to change much. Let's go five. So you've got a demand here. You've got a demand here. You've got a demand here. So one, two, three. So too much going on. Level above are pretty clean here. All right, that's it for me, Mark. Any questions, I'm free to answer. Yeah, see, and, and that's another thing, just on the fundamental side of things. Um, I, I, there's a guru out there right now. His name is me, Kevin. He's on Instagram now, like heavily active, and he's um, telling people to buy Tesla right now again. And there's talking about, you know, oh, there's so much great news coming out. I'm, I'm seeing the opposite. I, I keep track of Tesla because I am interested in buying Tesla at 550. I mean, they, they just literally laid off people. And I saw that they closed down some of the factories temporarily. So I don't know what news he's talking about that's so positive for people to jump in right now. Um, I mean, I know people are fanboys. When you get married to stocks, this, this, you just cannot let anything change your mind. Hence, which is going to lead into what I'm going to talk about here next. Can I, Mark, can I give you my two-minute rant on this? And I, I brought it up on the Instagram, too. A lot of people aren't stupid. They know the market's going to go down. So now the question you ponder is, why are they talking about it? And the answer is engagement. A lot of people are sitting on cash or are worried, and they love this kind of content because if you're holding Tesla stock, the last thing you want to do is listen to Mark saying that it's going to 350 or sorry, 450 or 500 because that's going to piss you off most people were like what the hell i have so much money but then there's this guy with a lot of following and he's telling hey, it's gonna go up so it does get the engagement but overall you're gonna lose reliability and that's what's gonna happen with a lot of people a lot of this happened with crypto at a wall street analyst she retired now she does a finance something like um teaches people and she said hey guys start buying consumer staples uh, they are very good to buy a recession and like my head spins when I hear stuff like that, because you have to understand we're not even in recession, recession. Once the liquidation starts happening, you're going to see the real selling happening. If that happens, no matter what you own, maybe Walmart goes down from 150 to 100. It won't be like UPST 500 to 50, but still like you need to know that, right? If you now, I don't think Walmart's going to zero. And overall, if you bought it, you're going to be positive, but Knowing these facts is important because if you've never invested and you listen to someone who says they're false Wall Street analyst and they're saying that you'll buy this and it's going to go up and it goes down, you're going to end up losing money because you will sell because you don't have the stomach and you don't know why you bought it. So uh, be very, very careful buying stocks right now. I don't know what more to say to that. If you are doing dollar cost averaging, building for the future, you understand you don't need the money. Go do all those things. But it, yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now, um, again, like uh, I hope, I hope we're wrong. I hope that the market does not go down further. Trust me, we're not trying to just be negative. I'm really hoping my portfolio looks like shit. I want the market to go up, but the reality is, it's just there's no indication that it looks like it's going to have some crazy run up yet. Just yet. That's just me, especially Tesla. Um, I, I, people think I hate Tesla. I just don't. I think it's very overvalued. I think it has a cult-like following. Um, I think eventually it will come down to reality when with the price where it should be once all the other EV cars are officially out there and they have a better infrastructure. I think I, I think the stock definitely will come down. I will buy at 550. I think it's going to go to three. If, if I'm going to be totally honest, I think it's going to go into the 300s by so, the end. Do you That's know Goldman? Do you know the top analyst for Goldman Sachs said today that Tesla, uh, Apple, if we get a recession, goes to 86? If yeah. Apple goes to 86, where does Tesla go? To? Because Apple is one of the strongest uh, leaders out there, right? Um, and yeah, I, my target for Tesla is around 350. That I think that's where it goes, but um, you're right. Um, yeah, even, I don't even, think Apple is going to go to 86, though. I mean, I think that's just an analyst trying to make a name for himself, say something controversial. Just no, to, but... He's not wrong, man. If the SPX goes to 2,900, that's exactly where it goes to. Go look. If Okay, so you, every single investor believes in Warren Buffett, right? You believe in Warren Buffett? I think he's an amazing um, long-term investor, yes. Okay, so do he you know he, he has a recession indicator, which takes the total value of all the private companies divided by the GDP. Based on that, I'll send you the chart. So you, if you want, you can post it with this. Based on that, we are at 150%. Um, to all that, the number that I give you, total number of stocks lifted privately divided by GDP. 
according to him, we should be at 75 to 90%, which means we have another 60% drop coming. This is just not one. There's a million indicators all stating the same things. Uh, but anyways, we're running out of time. So go ahead, Mark, do your thing. Yeah, man. Um, yeah.